Today, we're mixing a pop track from scratch using Xbox Pro. Take a listen to the before and after. In this video, I'm going to break down exactly how we went from completely raw to a fully polished mix. There's a lot we can learn from this session. I'll make it easy to follow along and explain every step of the process. Let's explore the session file. I've got everything color coded and organized so I can see exactly what we're working with. I also have markers set up so I can easily jump around the session. And I've taken care of all the editing and tuning so I'm ready to just focus on the mix. So in this session, we have a massive stack of vocals. This road, it's physical. I like to know what's good. On your side, let's cross the line. I like to think I could be But if I wanna be We got some nice hard hitting drums We've got a couple different basses We've got a Reese bass in the verses And we've got an 808 in the hook This is going to be an interesting challenge with this mix, getting the bass to feel consistent while still maintaining its own character. Obviously, the Reese bass and the 808 are very different tonally, but we want to make sure the mix feels like it has a consistent low end. We've also got a bunch of instruments here. I'm just going to loop through the hook and just focus on the faders. Right off the bat, we're clipping the master by a lot. What we need to do is turn down all the faders so that we're not clipping, then we can start balancing. It's important to do that step first. Otherwise, if I tried to start leveling before I pulled all the faders down, it would have been really hard to get a good balance. I wouldn't really know what I'm hearing because it would just be slamming the output. But let's start now actually adjusting our faders to get a good balance. playing through this I'm just listening for what's sticking out pulling it back a little bit if something isn't sitting forward enough I'm pulling it up a bit and this is just very rough mixing I'm not really trying to fine-tune anything I just want to make sure I can hear everything as we move forward it's a pretty good general rough mix I didn't do much but I just did enough to make sure that nothing was crazy loud or crazy soft I could hear everything in the mix the next step of my process I like to put a limiter on the master bus I just like to have it there as I'm mixing next I like to focus on whatever the most raw element of the mix is and in this case it's the vocal so I'm gonna get a basic vocal chain set up it'll help me make better mix decisions as we go so I'll load up Xbox Pro on the lead vocals in the hook here and just start dialing it in this world's physical I like to know what's good on your side let's cross the line I like to think I could be But if I wanna be We've got a lot of different colors of compression here. So Opto and Fet, transparent, uh, just kind of a classic vocal compression. Smooth is tucking in the transients nicely. It's pushing that vocal to the front of the mix. VCA and Fet is fast, aggressive. It sounds punchy. Fox Bus is gentle. Tube and Fet is warm and gooey. I think in this case, I'm, I'm leaning between maybe smooth and Opto and Fet. It just kind of depends on the character I like for this particular vocal. This row, it's physical. I like to know it's good. On your side, let's cross the line. I like to think I could be But if I wanna be So for this particular vocal I like that up in your face kind of sound I'm gonna go with smooth Now I am gonna dial in the color a bit The color allows me to actually affect the color of the compression algorithm So as I pull it down It's gonna get cleaner and a little bit clearer sounding And as I push it up It's gonna get warmer and maybe a bit fuller sounding This row, it's physical I like to know it's good On your side, let's cross the line I like to think I could be But if it's actually getting really nice and dark towards those higher color amounts. In this case, though, I think somewhere around this 120 range felt really nice. This row, it's physical. I like to know it's good. On your side, let's cross the line. I like to think I could be. After compression, I'm going to move on to tone. This row, it's physical. I like to know it's good. On your side, let's cross the line. I like to think I could be. But if I want to be. So with tone, one thing I generally do is push it a bit further than I actually want to and then flip the modes because it's 
it's going to allow me to hear what those differences are. You can see visually the curves are wildly different, but this is going to help me hear it more, even though it's way more EQ than I actually want to apply. This row, it's physical. I like to know what's good. On your side, let's cross the line. I like to think I could be. But if I want to be, be bad if you wanted me. So in this particular vocal, there's one that stands out and that's Shaper. It just sounded full, big. It had a lot of body in it still. It was bright and lively. This row, it's physical. I like to know what's good. On your side, let's cross the line. I like to think I could be. But if I want to be, be bad if you wanted me. This row, it's physical. I like to know what's good. On your side, let's cross the line. I like to think I could be. These tone handles are morphing the curve a bit. For me, on this particular vocal, it's getting a little sweeter as I push this high tone handle up, which I really like. This row, it's physical. I like to know what's good. On your side, let's cross the line. I like to think I could be. But now I'm going to go back to the de -esser and make sure I'm smoothing out all those sibilant sounds. This row, it's physical. I like to know what's good. On your side, let's cross the line. I like to think I could be. But if I want... They sound really natural like that. I like that. I'm going to play around with the focus and see what happens if I pull it down and push it up. Every vocalist is a little bit different. You can leave it at the default and it's going to do a great job, but if you really want to fine tune it and make sure that you're only focusing on those really problematic frequencies, you can do a quick sweep and find the exact frequencies that that vocalist needs the most control on. This row, it's physical. I like to know what's good. On your side, let's cross the line. I like to think I... This row, it's physical. I like to know what's good. On your side, let's cross the line. I like to think I could be. It seems like somewhere in the 6K range. When I have it there, it still feels bright and airy and upfront, but it doesn't feel harsh anymore. This row, it's physical. I like to know what's good. On your side, let's cross the line. I like. So next, I'm going to move on to space. This row, it's physical. I like to know what's good. On your side, let's cross the line. I like to think I could be. But if I want to be. Shaking, no faking, let me take my time Something about getting down with a body just like mine be This row, it's physical, I like to know what's good On your side, let's cross the line, I like to think I could be But if I wanna be, be bad if you wanted me so there's a few that stood out to me. Dark Hall, Plate, all sounded really nice. Chamber was nice, but I think Bright Hall really stood out. But let's see if we can fine tune it to make it even clearer and fit in with the track better. This row, it's physical. I like to know what's good. On your side, let's cross the line. I like to think I could be. But if I want to be... It's a really nice space. I might also apply a little delay. This row, it's physical. I like to know what's good. On your side, let's cross the line. I like to think I could be. I've got the delay in ping pong mode here. I'm going to try it both ways, but I think the ping pong is really nice for adding some width and space here on the leads. This row, it's physical. I like to know what's good. On your side, let's cross the line. I like to think I could be. But if I want to be. So this combination I really like. Ping pong on the delay, eighth note. It just adds adds so much width, especially with a reverb like this where it's already pretty big. This just supports it nicely. I really like having this massive reverb, but I want to make sure that we don't lose any clarity or articulation in the vocal. And so I'm going to use the verb duck feature here in Xbox Pro, and I'm just going to duck some of the reverb out of the way when the dry vocal is coming through. You can see exactly how much we're ducking with the duck meter here. This row, it's physical. I like to know what's good. On your side, let's cross the line. I like to think I could be. But if I want to be, be bad if you wanted me. Even with just a little bit of ducking, we're all of a sudden getting a super clear, super focused lead vocal but we still have all that massive space that's supporting it and it's not getting in the way, uh, which I really like. This row, it's physical. I like to know what's good. On your side, let's cross the line. I like to think I could be. But if I want to be, be bad if you wanted me. Legs shaking, no faking. Let me take my time. Let's play around with the space tone slider as well. I want to see if a darker or brighter space fits in with this track better. For this, I'm going to turn up the reverb and delay significantly just to hear what it sounds like in the mix a little bit easier. This row, it's physical. I like to know what's good. On your side, let's cross the line. I like to think I could be. But 
visceral, it's physical I like to know what's good On your side, let's cross the line I like to think I could be Bad if I wanna be Be bad if you wanted me Legs shaking, no faking Let me take my time Something about getting down with a body just like mine so just a tiny bit brighter, I think, fits in with the track really nicely. I'll dial back the reverb and delay to taste. Let's hear before and after all of the processing we've done with Xbox Pro so far. This role, it's physical. I like to know what's good. On your side, let's cross the line. I like to think I could be. But if I wanna be. I do want to play around with a little bit of SFX. I'll generally reach for the tape sap mode, which is just going to add warmth and character and vibe to it. Let's see what that sounds like. This role, it's physical. I like to I know it's good on your side let's cross the line i like to think i could be bad if i wanna be be bad if you wanted me legs shaking no faking let me take my time something about getting down with a body just like mine i'm gonna copy this chain over to all the other lead vocals so now we've got a nice lead vocal rough chain set up for this session. Next up, I'm gonna apply some processing to the ad-libs. Be, be bad. So we want that to have a similar tone to the leads, but probably a little different to place it just one step behind the leads. So I'll start by copying over our lead chain that we just created. Be, no, no, no. Be bad if so one trick I like to do with ad-libs is filter them a little bit more. And that's just gonna make it feel like they're a little bit further away. They're not quite as close as the lead. Be, no, no, no. Be bad if you wanted me. Hey, hey. Legs shaking, no faking. Let me take my time. So I might want a shorter reverb because the lead vocal reverb is pretty big. Bad if I wanna be. No, no, no. Be bad if you wanted me. Hey, hey. Legs shaking. Let's hear it in the context of the mix. Bad if I wanna be. No, no, no. Be bad if you wanted me. Hey. So hearing it in the mix, it feels dry. I think we should try some different spaces. Bad if I wanna be, no, no, no. be bad if you wanted me. One issue I'm having is the reverb feels a bit bulky. I want the reverb to also have a nice filtered sound. So I'm gonna use the SFX routing filter post. This is gonna take these filters and put them at the end of the chain. So that way it's gonna also filter the reverb. No, no, no. So on AdLib 3, I'm gonna start with the same chain, but I'm gonna tweak it pretty significantly. Instead of rolling off a lot of the lows, I'm gonna actually roll off more of the highs to give it a darker sound. When we go into this interlude before the next verse, having a darker, completely different timbre to the vocals that we're hearing, it creates contrast, it makes it sound interesting again. I'm just using them as different colors, different ear candy as the mix goes on. So in the verses, I'm gonna pull over the original ad-lib chain we set up. So a lot less reverb in the verses, and I'm probably gonna do this on the lead vocal as well. Let's just pull some of that reverb down. So I like that on the leads, pulling the reverb down a little bit and the delay up a bit is just changing the space enough to make it feel a little more intimate. It doesn't feel disjointed. It's the same space setting as the chorus. I'm also gonna do the same thing with the ad lib. I'm gonna change up the tone a bit with the filters, maybe even the space. Wait. I like that for ad lib four. Let's go back to ad lib one. So this is an important line. It's actually kind of a lead melody. So I'm gonna just pull the lead chain back over. See how that does. Can you take this off my chest, like based, and I might just try adding a bit more delay and reverb. Can you take this off my chest? So I really like it for the part that happens in the pre-hook, but in the chorus here in the hook, this processing doesn't work because these ad-libs are definitely supposed to be super filtered, super background. They, they're just kind of stepping on the main melody. Instead of just leaving this all in one track, I'm gonna create a new track, call it ad-lib five, and I'll move all these extra vocals down to it that I wanna have more of that background processing on. So in this one, I want more of a telephone effect. Be bad if you want me. Be bad if you wanted me. 
So now we've got our leads and our ad lib chain set up. These are good starting points. We're going to come back and fine tune and tweak them, but this is a great starting point for these tracks. Let's process all of these background vocal stacks. I'm gonna start thinking in terms of groups. So how do I wanna process the entire group of background vocals? I'll start by just soloing these out and panning them. Hey, bird, if you wanted me. Hey, bird, if you wanted me. Hey, bird, if you wanted me. So, some of these chanting background vocals, probably those could be tucked in a little bit. And some of these more melodic ones probably can come out a bit more. Let's add some processing to really bring this to the forefront of the mix. So in Logic Pro, I'm gonna group these together so I can process them all together. This would be the same as creating an aux track and then sending them to that aux track. We'll apply Xbox Pro on this track here. So for these background vocals, I want them to feel sparkly. They're supposed to add excitement when they're in. So with that in mind, I'm gonna boost some of the highs maybe cut some of the lows and apply a little bit of compression just to make sure they're super even and upfront. Let's go ahead and play around with the space so we can make these feel really massive. So I may play around with some modulation like chorus or maybe the unison just to make it feel even bigger. So this analog modeled chorus is really nice. It's adding some size and thickness to it. Let's hear what that sounds like in the mix. This role, it's physical. I like to know what's good. On your side, let's cross the line. I like to think I could be. So after Xbox Pro, I want to just apply a little bit of gentle glue. And I'm going to do that with Xbox Comp with the Vox Bus mode. This role, it's physical. I like to know what's good. On your side, let's cross the line. I like to think I could be. But if I want to be. I like what that's doing to the background vocal stack, but we also have these double vocals. This road, it's physical, I like to know what's good. On your side, let's cross the line, I like to think I could be. But if I wanna be, be. This road, it's physical, I like to know what's good. On your side, let's cross the line, I like to think I could be. But if I wanna be, be. But if you wanted me. So for all these doubles, I'm going to do the same grouping process, and I'm just gonna copy over the background vocal processing to give us a starting point. Oh, this shit is real. No back and forth. This time I'm sure I know it. Here on the doubles, we don't wanna muddy it up too much. We're gonna pull some of that reverb back and focus more on the tone of these so that these can just support the leads. Oh, this shit is real. No back and forth. This time I'm sure I know what I'm missing. You're what I'm missing. We do have these breath effects and octave effects vocals. Like to know it's good. On your side, it's crossing line. This is just a pitched down vocal. Let's slam it with Xbox Comp. 
Like to know it's good Always said it's crossing the line I like to think I could be Bad if I wanna be Be bad if you wanted me Legs shaking, no faking Let me take my time Something about getting down with a body just like mine Be your to know it's good on your side let's cross the line i like to think i could be so before with all those highs in there it was getting a little distracting we were hearing this track too much now with the highs rolled off it allows us to just use it to support the body frequencies of the vocal so it's almost like you can't really hear it when you don't know it's there but as soon as you take it away all of a sudden it's a massive difference and the vocal sounds a lot thinner like to know what's good on your side let's cross the line i like to think i could be bad if i wanna be be bad if you wanted me let's play with these breath effects and i just want to try some ping pong delay on them <sighs> So just this delay setting here is giving us some interest. It's a little bit more of like a percussive element now. And let's just listen before and after any processing. Like to know what's good. On your side, let's cross the line. I like to think I could be bad if I want to be. Let's listen in the context of the mix. Like to know what's good. On your side, let's cross the line. I like to think I could be bad if I want to be. Be bad if you want to so the vocals sound massive just with our initial processing on them. One thing I do want to tweak before we move on is some of the spaces on the leads. It is a bit big, so I'm going to play around with the time on the reverb here. Like to know what's good on your side, let's cross the line. I like to think I could be bad if I want to be. Be bad if you wanted me. We've got all the vocals processed, at least to a starting point. We'll come back and tweak things later. What I love about using Xbox Pro is that it was so fast to get a basic chain set up. So we were able to get to this point in just a few minutes. We'll be able to come back and tweak things later as we need to, but let's move on to the next part of this track. For this, I'm just gonna mute the vocals. Let's listen to the verse and a little bit of the hook of the track. The first thing that sticks out is the low end. We've got two different types of basses in the verse and the hook, and they're taking up different amounts of space. So we need to level that out, not necessarily make them sound the same, but we wanna make sure that it doesn't sound like all the low end went away when we went into the hook, which right now it kind of feels that way. So with the respace, I'm gonna pull up Xbox Tone and I'm gonna use a trick with the clear mode where I'm just gonna add some filter and pull out some of the lows and let's just see if this cleans it up a little bit. So I like what that sounds like. It's clearer, especially in these low mids where clear mode is essentially pulling out, but let's see what it sounds like compared to the 808. On the 808, I wanna try applying a little bit of Vox Bus just to tuck in some of the transients of the 808. Boxbus is just such a nice general compressor. It can really work on a lot of different things, especially in small amounts. Like on this 808, we're just using a tiny bit and you can tell it just feels a little more solid. The transient is a little bit more connected to the sustain and the sub. It feels a little bit more cohesive with this respace. So let's see what this sounds like in the context of the mix. I 
turn the 808 up significantly here with the fader, and that's also helping it feel bigger as it gets into the chorus. Now the sample here in the pre-hook has kind of a bass built into it. So what we wanna do is actually separate this because we might wanna process this differently then we're processing the rest of this sample track. So anytime this bass appears, which I believe are these three times, I'm gonna call this sample plus bass and move these regions down to it. So we're gonna have to process this one a little differently. I'll start with just some general EQ. To bring out some of those lows. So you can tell now it's more of a natural transition. The bass doesn't feel like it's completely gone when we head into this pre-hook. Before we did this EQ move to bring that bass up, it felt like the bass kind of dropped away there. But now with this EQ, the bass is nice and solid and consistent from section to section. Let's listen going into the hook. So it's nice and consistent now going from one section to the next, which is really important in the low end. You don't want one section to have massive low end and then the next section have really weak low end if there's a, supposed to be a bass there. Let's move on to drums. So we've got a couple different kicks, one that's mostly in the verse, one that's in the hook. We've also got different snare and clap layers. I think this kick might be a little bit aggressive, especially because we have such an aggressive transient on the 808 itself. So one problem with this kick and 808 is they're kind of stepping on each other a little bit. So I need to decide which one I want to shine through. Do I want it to be a kick heavy track or do I want the 808 to be a little bit heavier? And I think since the 808 has such a solid transient already, you can hear it already sounds like it has a kick built in. I think letting that one shine through and this kick just kind of support it. One issue I see is these kicks seem to be quantized perfectly onto the grid, whereas this 808 is a little bit looser. It might Some of them might be a little bit off the grid. So I'm just gonna line up some of these 808s a bit. So it already feels a lot more solid on that first hit when that 808 and the kick hit at exactly the same point. And just putting a little bit of a fade over the actual transient of the 808 is also kind of helping it feel a little bit more solid with the kick. So listen to how messy bar 35 through 38 sounds, and then listen to how tight the transient sounds on 31 to 35. That kick is just so much more consistent. The 808 sounds big. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy this 808 throughout and put it in the other hooks. This road, it's physical, I like to know it's good. On your side, let's cross the line, I like to think I could be. So this is a perfect example of what can sometimes happen with a mix. It just doesn't feel quite right when you get into it. It's not something that we noticed necessarily the first few times we were listening to it, but as we started to focus on, well, what does the kick and 808 sound like? We noticed there were some issues and we had to kind of problem solve, figure out different ways to address it. Ultimately, we had to fix it with the editing. Even though we try to do all the editing and tuning beforehand, sometimes something like this pops up as you're trying to mix and you just have to take a moment to fix it the right way so that way you can get the best end result. So now that we've got our kick and 808 sorted, let's look at the rest of the drums. We might add a little excitement to the hats just by lifting up the highs a little bit with a little air. So a trick I like to use sometimes is with the NYC mode, I'll actually pull the highs down and boost the air on percussive elements like this. It just smooths it out nicely. It doesn't get harsh. It just kind of reshapes the high end in a nice way, pulls it forward, makes it sound nice and bright. So as we're going along here, I'm just kind of rebalancing 808, kick, different drum elements. The 
guitar sample tracks, they sound really nice as is. I don't need to do a lot to those. We do have these interesting vocal chops. These are really cool sounds and I wanna make sure these get brought to the front of the mix when they're there. Even on these super filtered tracks like this, I still like to add a little bit of high end sometimes, especially with this NYC mode. Not much of that is happening because of the super high boost. It's really just cutting the lows, filtering them out. That's really what's opening it up. Just feels like it's lifted off the floor a bit. We also have these SFX tracks here. Let's see what that is. Let's blend those in. The guitar. I might even play around with a little Xbox SFX on it just to push it out wider. So the pitch widener is pretty cool. I might also play around with something like Phaser. It's just adding a little texture. So let's listen before and after all of our mix moves here. So let's take a listen with vocals and everything we've done so far. This role, it's physical, I like to know what's good. On your side, let's cross the line, I like to think I could be. But if I wanna be, be bad if you wanted me. So at this point, I'm just kind of balancing overall track versus vocals. And the way I like to do that is just turn down the vocals significantly so they're definitely too quiet and bring them back until they're just sitting in front of the loudest element of the track. In this track, kind of that snare, clap, hi-hat, we want those vocals to be just in front of those. I like how that's feeling. The track, the vocals, everything is kind of in the right place. So now I like to take a quick break, come back with fresh ears and start comparing to commercial reference mixes. It's a good point to do it because I've done pretty much everything that I can think of at this point. I just wanna come back and listen with fresh ears, get a new perspective and see what it might need to take it to the finish line. So I've just come back from a quick break and I started listening to some commercial reference mixes and comparing this track to those. It's hitting pretty hard right now. The transients on the track, like the drums are pretty hard hitting. And with this mix, I actually want it to be a little bit more subdued. I want it to be a little bit more well balanced. And so we're gonna do a couple things to achieve that. First, I'm going to take all of the track and group it together. And I'm just gonna process it as if it were a two track. I'm gonna start by loading Xbox comp on this track and flipping over to the Vox bus mode. So you can hear how adding a little gentle compression on the overall two track is just gonna tuck in the transients, bring up the rest of the track and just kind of glue it all together. This particular Vox Bus compressor is great at that. It's great for just kind of gluing things gently together. It just makes everything feel a bit more cohesive. I may tuck some of the kick back a little bit. Again, I don't wanna lose the punch. I just want to make it a little bit more manageable. So now I'm gonna go over to our vocals and I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna group all of the vocals together. I'm gonna to call it my all Vox bus. Visceral, it's physical, I like to know what's good. On your side, let's cross the line, I like to think I could be. On this track, I'm also gonna load up Xbox Comp, and again with Vox Buzz, just give it a gentle glue. This role, it's physical, I like to know it's good. On your side, let's cross the line, I like to think I could be. 
So because I've got this all Vox and two track set up, I can now even more easily dial in the balance between these two. This role, it's physical, I like to know what's good. On your side, let's cross the line, I like to think I could be. But if I wanna be. Now I'm just gonna look tonally. So I'm gonna load up an EQ on the two track. I might pull in some of the low mids just to make it a little tighter. This role, it's physical, I like to know what's good. On your side, let's cross the line, I like to think I could be. But if I wanna. The kick is a bit boomy, so I'm just gonna tuck that back a little bit more. This role, it's physical, I like to know what's good. On your side, let's cross the line, I like to think I could be. But if I wanna be. So just a couple tiny cuts, one in the high mids to control the harshness, one in the low mids to control some of the muddiness, and then just a general filter just to clean up any of the sub lows that we don't need. This role, it's physical, I like to know what's good. On your side, let's cross the line, I like to think I could be. But if I wanna be, be bad if you- Brings it all together, makes it feel a bit more controlled. On the vocals, I'm gonna load up Xbox Tone. This role, it's physical, I like to know what's good. I'm gonna go over to the NYC mode, tuck some of the highs and maybe some of the mids back just to round out the highs. This role, it's physical, I like to know what's good. On your side, let's cross the line, I like to think I could be. But if I wanna be, be bad if you wanted me. Leg shaking, no faking, let me take my time. So this is just taking some of the edge off. The way I had initially mixed it, it felt very present, very forward, but some of the reference mixes that I was using had a little bit rounder vocal tone. And so I kind of like that sound for this mix. So just some very subtle things. Now, if this was a massive difference, I would go back into the individual tracks and actually adjust the processing on those. But because this is just a minor tweak, I'm just gonna do it at the bus level and it's a little bit easier to dial in that way. So listening before and after our bus processing we just did. So this is on the two track and the all Vox bus. This role, it's physical, I like to know what's good. On your side, let's cross the line, I like to think I could be. But if I wanna be, be bad if you wanted me. So it's a subtle difference, but it just brings everything together and makes it feel a little bit more cohesive. It rounds out the highs in a nice way and it just glues everything together. So now I'm gonna move on to the mix bus processing. So with this mix bus, I'm just gonna sweeten it up very slightly. I'm gonna start with a little EQ. This role, it's physical, I like to know what's good. On your side, let's cross the line, I like to think I could be. But if I wanna be, be bad if you wanted me. Leg shaking, no faking, let me take my time. Something about getting down with a body just like mine. Be yours if you wanted me. So I'm doing very subtle moves here, maybe a dB at most in either direction. And at this point, I'm just trying to sweeten it up. So I might pull out some frequencies that feel a little harsh. I might push up some that feel pleasant and just kind of nudge it in the right direction. This role, it's physical, I like to know what's good. On your side, let's cross the line, I like to think I could be. I like how that sounds. I'm going to apply a little bit of compression on this track, and I'm just going to pull up a stock compressor. For this type of compression, I like using a VCA. It's going to be pretty clean and fast. This role, it's physical, I like to know what's good. On your side, let's cross the line, I like to think I could be. But if I want to be, be bad if you wanted me. Shaking, no faking, let me take my time Something about getting down with a body just like mine Be yours if you wanted me so what we're hearing when we turn this compressor on is it's really compressing a lot when the lows hit, when the kick and the 808 hit, we're getting a lot tighter sound there. It, actually a bit too tight. We wanna just blend this in in parallel just a little bit. This role, it's physical, I like to know what's good. On your side, let's cross the line, I like to think I could. That feels nice, just a little bit of glue. Let's listen before and after our compression and EQ on the mix bus. This role, it's physical, I like to know what's good. On your side, let's cross the line, I like to think I could be very nice and before any of our bus processing so this is our all vox bus two track and the actual mix bus this 
visceral, it's physical I like to know what's good On your side, let's cross the line I like to think I could be Bad if I wanna be Be bad if you wanted me Legs shaking, no faking Let me take my time so it sounds really nice that way. I like how it sounds compared to commercial reference mixes. Again, it's not quite as punchy and extreme, especially if you're listening to the kick in 808. It's easy to kind of trick yourself into thinking, oh, I gotta make this the punchiest kick and the punchiest snare and the punchiest 808. But then what tends to happen is you'll lose focus of the actual record itself. And that's what we care most about when we're mixing. We're trying to put the record in the best light, giving it a nice vibe overall. So now we're getting into the finishing stages of this mix. And one of the things I always like to look at at this stage is the vocals and see if they need to do any type of vocal ride. The verses are quite dynamic. That means we have some words that are just whispered and some words that are sung with a lot more power. Listen to just verse two here. We're gonna listen to a bit and see if you can hear that. Some of the words kind of falling into the track, some of them jumping out. Come across this room. times where the vocal really falls in. So I'm gonna apply X Rider to do an automatic vocal ride of this verse. And the way I'm gonna set it is I'm just gonna play around with this target to set it kind of where the waveform is hitting. At extreme amounts here, like moving 6 dB, we're getting a pretty significant vocal ride. I would say we probably only need to go about 3 dB on either side. And actually, I kind of want it to be able to turn up more than I want it to turn down. So for example, on this word, I don't want it to turn down quite as much. I want to keep some of those upward dynamics, uh, but I also want to be able to turn up some of these super soft ones significantly more. So I'm going to just shift the minimum and maximum so that the most it'll turn it down is just 1.5 1, 1 dB but the most it'll turn it up is 6 dB, so it'll really turn up these super soft ones. And now I'll just use the speed to just pull it back a little bit. Uh, this is just gonna make it a little bit slower and a little bit more human-like. We could probably let it turn up even more on some of those super soft ones. So it's really nice in the verses like that to just have an automatic vocal ride. I'm also gonna apply it to the pre-hook and the hook just to kind of tuck it in and make sure it stays perfectly in the mix. Can you take this off my chest, You're like an always based. So that just gives it a nice final polish, keeps it perfectly in the mix. Taste, You're like an It'd be kind of cool to do a delay throw or something on this. Babe. That sounds pretty cool. Taste, like an I may not want that to ping pong. I may just want to keep it centered. Taste, like an I so I'd also like to do some delay throws on this Leadvox 2 track. So to do that, I'm going to set up an aux track with Xvox space on it. And I'll set the input of this aux track to bus 16. That way I can send the output of bus 16 here. So now I've got a send and return with Xvox space. Now for this one, I'm going to use only the delayed signal. So I'm going to take the dry all the way down and I'll set up my delay similar to how I had it in the other track. So a nice half note delay here. Again, I think a mono delay on this part is going to be nice, and I think I'll try actually quarter notes. Seems like half might be the right call. Hey, 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 
So I like how that sounds, but now I only want it to come through on certain words. So I'm gonna automate the send amount so that it's only sending from this track on certain words. So you can see this is now only gonna send on that word. And then this one, I might do a few more words here. I like how that sounds. So now that we've got our delay send sending at the right times, let's tweak this delay a little bit more. Now to create a really cool delay effect, I'm gonna copy Xbox space, so now I've got two. I'm gonna set one to ping pong on maybe a quarter note. I'm gonna turn the dry up on the second delay. So this is the second delay in the chain. So now we're gonna hear a little bit of both. So before and after, here's the before. Just feels like there's empty space, the after. I'll copy this automation down here as well. So on that word space, it could be cool to have kind of a reverb throw on that one. So let's try the similar concept. This time we're gonna load up Xbox space on a new aux track. And instead of delay this time, we're gonna use reverb primarily. So again, we've got the dry turned all the way down on the reverb throw Xbox space. And let's just pick a nice reverb for this. I think vibrant is super nice for this. It's a nice long reverb. I'm just going to turn the time up to the max. Now to automate this, instead of automating the send, I'm actually going to automate the return. So you can see I put my reverb and delay throw in the session. So now I can actually automate the level on the actual throw. So it's just a subtle hint of something changing a little bit on that word. So here's a time where I might want to do a manual fader ride. Uh, just a little automation on this line because it's such a cool line. It adds so much energy going into this hook. I want to just make sure we hear that. You can actually start a little bit lower and get louder as it goes. It's important at this stage in a mix to ask yourself, with every change you make, is it actually making it better? Always just be very critical of your tweaks at this stage, uh, just to make sure that you're actually pushing it in the right direction. So let's listen before and after any of our processing. This road's physical, I like to know it's good. On your side, let's cross the line, I like to think I could be. But if I wanna be, be bad if you wanted me. Leg shaking, no faking, let me take my time. Something about getting down with a body just like mine be. So you can see we didn't go crazy with processing. We didn't do a million different plugins. Obviously, if we hadn't used Xbox Pro, we would have had to use a lot more plugins to do some of the vocal mixing, but really we didn't need to do that much processing outside of that. It's something that as you get more comfortable mixing, you'll get more comfortable with just leaving a track as is. And I found a lot of times you get better results with that.
I hope you've enjoyed seeing this mix come together and have picked up a few tips and tricks you can try out in your next session. Drop a comment below with what you'd like us to mix next. All across the room feels safe Keep your distance, I need space I can feel it in my body, the way you look at me Asymmetry is killing me, I think I gotta leave But now I'm moving closer, wanna take you home with me Wanna know what I'm missing, show me what I'm missing Can you take this off my chest? Take my